Hey, well, welcome everybody to this new show, Brush Hour, and of course I'm very excited to have this series get kicked off because as you know, I am obsessed, maybe in an unhealthy way, with brushes and everything having to do with using custom brushes in your illustration work. So uh, for today's very first uh, episode of this new show, we are going to talk about spatter. Now, I think a lot of people don't give spatter enough of um, or enough room to stretch and to try new things with it. And so I'm going to show you a few examples of how you can do that. I'm going to aim to show you seven today in the hour that we have together. Hopefully I'll be able to make it through all of them. All right. So thank you for joining me. I'll say hi to some folks in the chat really quickly here. Uh, we have Sean and Michelle and uh, Christine. Nice to see you and Tim and uh, Jason and Andrea and Richard and uh, Sean and Kong. Uh, General Kenobi is here, everybody. So, wow, no pressure there. Okay, why don't we get started? Now, uh, we are going to be looking first at using spatter for texture. Um, maybe some of you have already tried this before, but I like to use it for things such as rocks and trees, and I'll show you how I do that. Uh, so to get started, I'm just gonna make myself a shape using the lasso tool. And this is one of the nice things you can do is use spatter inside of a selection. Uh, it's a great way to work. So I could either paint myself a shape and lock my transparency, or I could just go ahead and draw one with the lasso tool. So I'm gonna do that right now. And I'll just make a nice little kind of a rocky shape here. And so there we go. All right, now here's my rock out there in nature. Oops, looks like I've got some feathering there. Let's just knock that out. Goodbye feathering. I was using that yesterday for an illustration. Gotta love that feathering. All right, brand new rock right there. Maybe it's sitting in some grass. And I'll go ahead and just grab a color and I'm just gonna knock that in there with a fill, okay? And then, once I've got that set, I'm gonna lock my transparency. So I'll come over here to the layer panel and I say lock transparency. It's this very first little square that you see uh, with a checkerboard pattern on it. And once I've locked transparency, I can only paint inside of what is there. Okay, so first thing I might do, I might decide, okay, I'll give myself just some nice planes here. And I'm gonna add to this selection, holding down the shift key. Okay, like that, and maybe one cutting across this way. Now these random shapes, okay, are just going to add a bit of life to that rock. And I'll go ahead and with that same color that I've got, I'll make it just a little warmer and then knock it down to a darker value. And I hit Option Delete to fill that in. Okay, so we're already getting sort of the appearance of a rock right here. But now the spatter comes in handy. So I have a couple of options. I could, of course, grab a lighter color and just go to town like that but I wanna do something a little fancier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hold down the Command key. If you're on a PC, you would hold down Control. And I'm gonna tap on the layer right there. Okay, this is the layer where I've just drawn that rock. Layer three. Of course, I don't name my layers. Who does that? Bad habits, everybody. Now I'm gonna make a new layer above that. And what I've done is I still have that active selection. But on this new layer, okay, I'm now gonna to go to town with this spatter brush. Now let's look and see, by the way, how many options we have for spatter. The one I'm using right now is from the spring 2019 Photoshop brush update from two years ago. Remember if you're a subscriber to Fres uh, Fresco or Photoshop, you get all these brushes for free. And it's the Pollock brush, okay? So I'm gonna size that down a little bit using my left bracket key. And I'm just gonna add some nice spattery bits here like that, okay. Now, I want to play with some blend modes for this, okay? So if I come over here to my blend modes, you'll see right here where it says normal. 
right? I can start to look at how those might affect the appearance. Now, overlay is always a nice one for this, right? And uh, some people like color dodge, but that one's just, woo, pretty intense. But I'm gonna go for overlay, okay? Or I could do multiply, right? Or you could do a combination. But I'll go ahead and start with multiply. And let's see, I'll use a lighter color now. And let's try a different spatter brush. I'll actually open the spatter brush set. Remember, you can download these from the brushes page. For those of you who don't know how to download all these custom brushes that we have in the Adobe Brush Library, what you do is you come to this tiny little menu up here in the top of your brushes panel. Just tap on that. And here you see the option to import brushes. Now, by importing the brushes, okay, you're going to be loading a page that is going to ask you to log in. Um, oh, pardon me, uh, get more brushes. You tap on get more brushes, you're gonna to go to a website that uh, is gonna ask you to log in with your Adobe credentials, and boom, you're gonna be plopped onto this amazing page that has over 1,800 custom brushes for you to grab, so, hmm, quite a few. All right, now meanwhile, in this spatter brush set, uh, I'm going to use the Beautiful Mess spatter right here. Let's select that one. And I've still got this active selection right here. So I'm just going to add a bit more spatter right here. I'll try a really dark color and you'll see what happens here. Look at that. Very nice. Okay, again I can play with my blend modes. I like that one. Look at that. That's overlay again. So right away what we've done is we've given this rock some extra character. Okay, group those two layers together and move them over here. Isn't that nice? And that's going to give you a really quick, easy peasy way to add some neat effects to a rock. Now, what about a nice tree? Well, I think we should do that as well. Just behind here, go ahead and add a little selection for the tree trunk there. Okay. Again, just painting inside the selection, right? Nothing fancy. And I'm going to add to that selection here. Hold down the shift key and just uh, da, 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 da. add another branch. Just get rid of that little bump right there. There we go. And here, <clears throat> can use another gray color, but this will be a warmer gray. Just fill that in. Okay, option delete fills the foreground color. Now while I've got that selection, I'll go ahead and make a new layer above it. And I've already got this brush, this beautiful mess from the spatter brush set. So I think I'll come up here and I'll grab lighter color and just add a few hits of that. Okay, I can increase the size of that brush too. Maybe grab a darker color, do a bit more of the same. And in just a few passes, look what we've done here. And then I think I'll just grab a uh, another one of these brushes. Let's try Spatterbot, that's a nice one, okay? Go really dark this time. Just have a couple little hits like that. And you are already in good shape. Now look at that, look at that. Spatter inside of selections, giving you these really nice textural options. And we only used two or three brushes there. And in this brush set, there are actually about, I think, uh, 60 or 70. So more than enough options for you to find the look that you're after. All right, so that's the first thing I wanted to show you with using spatter brushes, which is adding texture to, um, well, basically anything, right? If you have any questions, throw them up in the chat. If you're watching on YouTube, please head over to behance.net slash live, because then I'll be able to interact with you directly in the live chat, okay? All right, let's see. Any questions from anybody here? Let's see, let's see. Most impressive, oh, thank you very much. Uh, painting is magic, painting is magic. I agree with that. Texture is the look and feel of a surface. You got it, Robzilla. Thanks for tuning in, by the way. Check out Rob's work, amazing illustrator, buddy. Amazing illustrator. Um, yeah, never thought of using spatter brush this way. Well, Kara, guess what? We got more tips coming your way right now. So, we'll just group these little fellas right here, and we'll slide them on over. And then we're gonna make some room for our next tip, which is shading, shading, shading. 
How would you use spatter for shading? Well, <clears throat> simple. <laughs> I'll show you what I mean. Okay, I'm gonna grab a nice color here. There we go. And I'm just going to, again, this is, I'm using a selection, but remember, you could paint your selection just as easily. But in the interest of time, since I am trying to get through quite a few cool tips for you today, I'm just going to make myself a nice selection here. And this is going to be a pear. A little pear for you there. Okay, I'll just fill that in with some color there. And again, I can lock my transparency if I wish. All right, and before I do that, I'll just make a layer behind it. And I'm gonna go ahead and just make this little shape here for a little shadow, a little shadow shape for our pear. Okay, I like this blue color we're using here, so I'm just gonna grab that. Um, but before I put in my shadow, I'm going to show you something neat, which is I'm actually going to use spatter to do it. Why would I do that? Well, it's going to be part of how we uh, explain one of the other tips that I have for changing the quality of the edges in your work, the hard edges, and how to take hard edges in your work and soften them in a more interesting way. Okay, so check this out. I'm going to fill this shadow right there. and. Now, I want to actually have this get softer, okay? So what I'm going to do is take my brush and change its mode from normal to clear. Clear. Now what clear does is it takes any brush you're using and it turns it into an eraser. But you retain all the properties of that brush, okay? Texture and whatever else. So now, I can come over here and I can just Gently, gently, gently soften that shadow as it gets farther away from the pear, like that. Isn't that a neat little thing to do? That's a neat way to use a spatter brush, right? And of course, you could use different brushes that would be more evenly spaced if you like. For example, we have organic noise in here, which is one of the spatter uh, options. So I think the uh, organic noise alias would be a, a good idea for this one. I can size it way down, make it nice and small, change its mode to clear again, and then look at that. Oh boy. Perfecto. So there is something else for you to try. Okay, but back to our topic of shading, okay? I might have overdone it there a bit. I can always just add some though. Aha, look at that. Just add it back in. Mm-hmm. Okay, now let's come back to our pair. We'll go back to that layer. And again, I'm gonna lock transparency, lock layer transparency, okay. While we have this, this particular brush selected, all right, just wanna see what happens when I paint with it. Yeah, that looks like pretty much what I'm probably going to be going for. But I want to check and see what other options we have here because I'm pretty sure I had some spatter brushes in here that take advantage of pen pressure. Let's see, for how much um, spatter is uh, applied in terms of the density of the spatter. So let's see. We have pressure control. I knew it was in there somewhere, gang. I knew it was in there somewhere. Okay, I like this one. Let's try pressure control one, all right. Light pressure, less spatter. Heavier pressure, more spatter. Oh boy, that's the ticket. Now while we're at it, we may as well do something fun here. Okay, now I could, I could simply select this color, right? And I could cool it off a little bit, go for a darker color. And since I've already locked transparency, I could then just sort of determine where my, my edge is there, the core of my shadow, okay. Whoops, wrong way. There we go. I forgot, I forgot that we're moving our, uh, 
shadow over to the to the left. As a lefty, I always put my shadows on the right. And today I just felt like being different. Alrighty, check it out. So, and then with lighter pressure, I can just come in here, add some spatter like that, and there's a nice textural shadow. All right, there's one option. Come along here. And then, since we're going to reflect whatever's on this surface over here, whatever the pair is sitting on, could be a table of some color, we don't know. It could be a lighter color. I could take my this green right here and could open up our HSV sliders. And you could say, all right, let's move that hue a bit this way. Let's knock that saturation down. And let's lighten that a little bit, just a hair. Just get some reflected light in there, right? It's one way to do it. Subtle. You want to take that shadow, you can do the same thing, lock that transparency, grab that color, push that more to green, make it just slightly lighter. A little light in there, a little reflected light. Or if you want to get really, really fancy, gang. And get a little darker here, a little cooler there. Come back to that pair. A little core shadow action. Okay, so what we're doing is we're using spatter for our shadow, okay? And that's a lovely way to use it. Lovely way to use it. I just switched over to the pressure concentrate brush because I want you to see what happens when you use a, a more subtle dot grain for the spatter. See that nice edge you get? It's like a soft edge, basically. And why not throw in a little highlight, you know? Hey! Keeping that nice texture going. I like that. Okay, so shading. Now, of course, there are many, many other ways to shade using these brushes, but just as an overview, I thought it'd be good to show you this little exercise. And see how I keep going back and forth between the colors and just kind of painting over it until I get the edge quality that I like. Nice, right? Alrighty, so that's another way to do it. So why don't we take those two layers and we'll just move that guy over that way. Now we've got an enormous pair in front of some rocks. You see that sort of thing all the time, don't you, gang? Okay, now, directional spatter. What do I mean by that? This is tip number three. Directional spatter. Well, what I mean is because of the wonders of technology and the fact that we're now able to draw with a stylus that recognizes pen tilt, just like the Apple Pencil does, and uh, the Wacom stylus and others. Um, this then allows us to control the direction of spatter with pen tilt, which is a pretty handy thing. And I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to find a brush that responds to tilt. So let's see here. Ta -ti -ta -ti -ta -ta -ta, I believe Landscaper is one such brush. Do you see what's going on here? Now, this is the landscaper brush in the spatter brush set. All right, and I'll show you what this does. I'll just use black for now. If I hold my stylus at a 90 degree angle, I'm gonna zoom out here for a moment so you can really take a look at what I'm doing with my hand. I'm holding the stylus close to a 90 degree angle, okay, against the surface on which I'm drawing. And what that's going to do is it's not going to create any distortion in the stamp of that brush, okay? And it's going to just look like this. So I'm going to spatter with it, and that's what you get, okay? Very nice. All right. See the result here? Now, check this out. I'm going to take my stylus and I'm going to angle it 
like so. Okay, so I'm angling it away from 90 degrees. And I'm going to draw with it again. And I want you to see the difference. Aha! See what's happening? I can control the direction of that spatter. So for example, if I were to hold it with the tip of the stylus facing to the right and angle it in the same direction, I can spatter in that direction and sweep upwards like that, right? So I'm controlling the direction of the spatter and the pressure is going to control how big it is. Oh, why is this useful? Oh my goodness, well, lots of reasons. What if you're doing something gruesome and maybe there's some blood, some bloody spatter, and you wanna say, okay, well, the blood is originating from this point and it's coming out that way. Blech. Okay, so I'll just draw it out that way. Okay, get the idea there? Now, you could do this with other spatter shapes as well. So, for example, if I wanted to come back to that nice spatter bot brush, which I like, but I want to use pen tilt to control the direction of it, okay? Well, come over here to my shape dynamics, and under size jitter, I'm going to control with pen tilt, and I'm going to tilt the tilt scale all the way up to 200%. Now you can see the brush stamp preview is already showing me what's going to happen, okay? So as I go out, blah, look at that. Okay, you can see that clear directional movement up and to the right, right? So I could start small and pop it out like this, blah, okay? But there are much nicer ways to use it that aren't so violent. And a great example would be grass. Grass, simple. So let's grab a nice dark color, dark green. And look, I'm just angling the spatter up. So the grass is growing upward. Okay, so I could fill this in. And then I could grab a lighter color and paint over to the top of that. And because it's spatter, you're gonna get all these nice areas coming through and you get that excellent grass effect. And of course, all these little bits and bobs you have at the top, if you wanna clean that up, just take your lasso tool, come along there and just knock out some of them so it doesn't look so funny. Right, and there is some very convincing Grass for you all. What do you think about that? Directional spatter, directional spatter. It can be quite useful for quite a few many things. And let's uh, go ahead and size that down. And why not just throw it behind here? That works nicely. Okay. And I may as well flip it. Okay, moving on. So what are we gonna do for tip number four? Snow and spray. Ah, before I get to this, once again, I wanna check and see how y'all are doing, see if you have any questions. Alrighty. Hello, Mr. Webster, says Gary. Hello, Gary, nice to see you, nice to see you. Uh, Tim says the tilde shortcut, <clears throat> tilde key shortcut is a great one. Um, yes, the tilde key is a great one. So if you hold down the tilde key, you'll temporarily call up the clear mode of your brush. Very nice. Um, email didn't give a day or time, says Sig. If you received an email about this and didn't have the day or time, then I'm sorry about that. That scarf doesn't say guy who creates bloody spatter brushes. Well, looks can be deceiving. <clears throat> Okay. Thomas says, any help for people who have a Wacom Intuos with a pen that doesn't support tilt? Thomas, I believe that any Intuos tablet made in the last six or seven years will support tilt. Um, now, 
if you're talking about a graphire or a, um, I'm trying to think what the other models are they that they make that you that replace the graphire. But the word when they put the word intuos in front of it, I'm, I was pretty sure that that meant you're getting a, a a stylus that will support tilt. I could be wrong. I'm sorry. Um, okay, great. Well, here we go. Snow and spray. Alrighty. Go ahead and throw a little sky back here. Why not? We can just use this same little area of our canvas, right? Why not? Why not? And I'm going to grab a nice color like that. And we want to throw some snow in there. Well, how simple is that? No problemo. You will find that, of course, you could use regular old spatter brush, right? To do this, very simply, just select some white and, uh, yeah, paint some snow. It's very convincing, okay? Um, but you may wish to go a step further. And we have now a variation of a spatter brush that you can get. And the latest brush update for everybody, which is the winter uh, 2021 brush update, uh, which I have not yet loaded. Let me just go ahead and load those. Brushes. Adobe. Winter 2021. Cool. I'm glad that I went ahead and made those in ABR as I should have done. Now, in this brush set, which I'll put up here, you're going to find flurries. Yes, sorry, flurries. So I'll go ahead and grab flurries number two. Now look at that brush stamp. You're going to see there are some lovely little snowflakes in there. So I'll make that a little smaller and just start to paint. Just move it around the canvas here very freely. And if we were to zoom in on that, you'll be able to see that there are all these nice little snowflakes, each and every one unique and different from the last with some very convincing snow. So that's another option for you. But we also have the concept brushes. Now, in the concept brush set, you will also find uh, some snow brushes. I don't have them loaded here right now, but go into the concept brushes and you will find two different kinds of snowfall uh, as well as some rain. And these are, of course, variations of spatter brushes. Uh, returning back to that, winter update. This is available for all of you right now, by the way. Um, I just want to show off that Flurry's brush. I'm going to use it with black at its full resolution so you can just see what it does. Notice how also some of the snowflakes are lighter in value. They're more transparent. Okay, now how was I able to create all these different snowflakes that actually look different from one another using a single stamp? And the answer is dual brush. So dual brush allows me to, if you look at the brush settings here, under dual brush, I'm actually using one of the flurry brushes right here. And I am using it as a color burn in the color burn mode, which means it's going to, because it's not 100% opaque, it's going to be removing randomly in the stamp shape that it's given um, pixels from the positive area that we're actually painting. So there's a nice, nice positive and negative thing happening, this additive and subtractive thing happening. And that's what creates all those lovely random patterns that all still look like snowflakes. So a little tip for you there. Okie dokie. All right, now for spray, why am I talking about spray? Well, this has to do with water effects. 
So another example would be this splashy. Okay, another spatter brush. And what would be nice would be I'll go ahead and grab some this blue here. I'll just put that there. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? Just like that. Boom. Maybe combine that with some um, some of that spatter bot. Just like that. So here you get some nice wet little shapes and effects. Remember you can always go to your clear mode and you can even get rid of some of it with the spatter to add even more interest, right? And then come over here, jump into the Mega Pack ink box, and why don't we grab, uh, let's see, I want something with a nice little bit of do that classic cartoonist brush, it's a nice one. And just have somebody just jumping up. into a puddle. Right? Just like that. Jumping into a puddle, and maybe it's raining. You know how we used that um, spatter brush earlier with directional movement to it? Well, I suppose you could do the same thing here. Go back to our spatter, and uh, I'm going to then select, uh, what was a nice one for that? I guess the spatter bot C is kind of nice. Go into brush settings. Go ahead and change this to pen tilt. So I'm controlling. See that? I can do this. Ah, oh, lovely, lovely. And I'm gonna put some roundness jitter in there. Size that down a bit. Increase the spacing. Okay, so we don't have too many raindrops. Grab that same blue color. And um, I'm gonna make sure that we're using our Tilt to control the direction. And then just throw some, some rain right there. Look at that, easy. Erase away the bits you don't want to cover, certain details like the facial expression and whatnot, right? You can just get rid of that. But just like that, you make a nice little illustration um, using the spray effect with the spatter, right? I can go off in this direction too. Say, oh look, it's coming up and out like that. Go for a darker color, add a bit more splishy splashiness, right? Simple as that, gang. Simple as that. Okie dokie. So, let's take all that action. And just size that down. Put that up here. And next on our list, what do we have? Pointillism. Pointillism. So raise your hand if you know what pointillism is. Okay. 
What is pointillism? Uh, style of painting using dots, right? Uh, dots of paint or little swatches of paint. Um, made very popular, of course, by artists like Georges Seurat. Seurat, Seurat. Get your French R in there. A uh, wonderful French painter. Um, and, well, you could use spatter to do some nice pointillism work as well, actually. Um, and an example of that would be to actually use one of the impressions brushes that's already custom made for this kind of work. And that is, um, we have a Syrah brush right here. Look at this, Syrah and Syrah Control. So I'll go for that Syrah Control brush. And uh, this is going to touch on the use of color dynamics with spatter, which is a really cool technique. Okay, so I want to do some uh, some nice planty kind of stuff, foliage, right? Plant life. Grab my green and just start painting. If you look here, I'll grab a little lighter color so you can see this clearly. See how there's just a slight variation in the color? Well, the spatter brush is using color dynamics to achieve that. We can increase this effect by coming to color dynamics and changing the hue jitter to 10 and the brightness to 5. So it'll be even more pronounced and get really that wonderful pointillism effect. Right? So the brush stamp itself is just a few blobs. Okay? And just like spatter brushes, we are increasing the spacing and I am also having the angle rotate randomly. So 100% angle jitter setting for this okay so there you have it look at that so if you want to be mr. Seurat monsieur Seurat you can do so without any trouble at all go a little darker add a little bit of tone here so maybe we're painting like a nice little hedge or something who knows who knows Go even darker still, get right here along the bottom. Isn't that nice? Sky's the limit here. So this is pointillism with spatter. Now, of course, you can do this on your own with any of the other spatter brushes by simply adjusting some of the brush settings. And to do so, I'll show you how to do that. And yes, this Impressionist brush set is also available. You just go to that brush uh, page and download it. Simple as that. Let's go back to our spatter brushes. Um, so let's see, we have many, many options here, but maybe I could take, for example, uh, da -da 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 -da. Mm -hmm. Well, the creeper's kind of an interesting one. Oh, actually, that wouldn't be very good for this. Maybe tilt a whirl. That one's got tons and tons of uh, spacing. I think I'll actually go back to that trusty spatter bot just because I know how to easily change the settings to do what we want. So at the moment, the spacing is 10%. We're going to tighten that up a bit. Okay, make it six. And we're going to increase the count, okay, the number of times that the stamp is being stamped onto the canvas. And uh, then I'm going to decrease the scattering value to about, yeah, 19. Let's see what that does. Yeah, this is getting somewhere. Um, we'll make our minimum diameter a bit bigger, 20%. And now we come to color dynamics. All right, I'm going to leave the saturation jitter off, but hue, I'm going to set to 10 and brightness to 5. And already, we're getting some nice work there. Let's bump that up. Let's try painting with that. Ooh, I like it, I like it, I like it, I like it, I like it. So, what if we did this? What if we painted inside of something, right? Let's try that. Oh, 
vase kind of a thing here. And we'll change our color. Oh yeah, I like that. Let's make it a little lighter. See that? Go a little lighter on this side here. And zoom in so you can really see what's happening there. So there are some neat pointillism effects we're getting right there. Go ahead and make a little selection right there for the top. That makes it better. Um, so you can paint freely with this batter or you can paint inside selections up to you. But you can do these nice pointillism effects because you're taking advantage of color dynamics. Color dynamics. So, any questions about that? Kyle, can you show us what that change hardness based on HUD preference setting is meant for? Hmm? I don't see where that is. Where should I be looking for that? Give me a clue. Um, let's see. One thing I'm really getting from this is seeing that I'm using these brushes much smaller than they were intended, says Pauline. Well, you know, you can, this is cool about um, any of these brushes is you can size them up, size them down, see what kind of different effects you get. And then, um, yeah, see what you get. Uh, no harm in trying that. Sean says, waiting for a salty sea captain. Ah, sea captain does not appear in this show, but if you want to see the sea captain, tune in Wednesdays and Thursdays at 5.30 p.m. Eastern for my draw along show, which is for all ages. And I hope you'll watch that because, um, I have a lot of fun on that show and we all get along very nicely together because it's a collaborative show. So you tell me what to draw at the end of the show and I draw it for you. That's fun. Okie dokie. All right, um, now I'm gonna check in on that question. To access the HUD, press and hold down Alt and right click on Windows or, uh, that's been there for ages. I still don't know what that is, uh, but it sounds like Tim is on top of it. Um, John is asking, are all these brushes part of the Photoshop brush set? These are all part of the extended Photoshop brush set, which has over 1,800 brushes that you can download from a single location by going here to the top right corner of your uh, brushes panel and it's saying, get more brushes. Do it today. Do it. You're missing out if you're not using them. There are so many and they are really fun. Okay, so I could go on with pointillism, but I think you get the idea. I hope that was clear. So slide you over there, fella. And now we are on to foliage. So we already touched on this a little bit, but yes, batter is just great for foliage. Um, really, especially if you're doing like concept art and you gotta knock something in really fast and you don't have time to be all fancy, right? So, uh, you've got your trees in the background, right? Everything's looking good. Just gotta knock in some foliage. That looks terrible, Kyle. I'll fix that in a second, don't you worry. Look at that, easy peasy. Okay, let's fix that. And then we'll come over here and we'll just do... This is not gonna be the best looking tree gang. I just wanna make a point here. I wanna make a point. So bear with me. Probably would've been faster if I just drew this, but uh, that's okay. Zing. All right, whatever. We've got our tree and our tree needs some leaves. Needs some leaves. Okay, so spatter to the rescue. We just 
go ahead and let's see, we have so many options. You could use the soft spread. I love this one. Let's just do this. Da, 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 da. Delightful. You can change the brush mode to normal. Right now it's on multiply. That's why you can see through it. And then you can get some of that in there. Looking for something a little grittier. Uh, you can go ahead and do the sponge. Add a few little random leaves in there, right? Bada -bada 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 -bum. But you can see how simple this is to just knock in your foliage. Isn't that lovely? What a lovely effect. What a lovely effect that is. Get rid of what you don't want, right? No big deal. Select and delete. Um, and then, hey, you want to, you know, if you want to get fancy and Get more detail on top of that. You could always come back to one of those spatter bots and just throw in a few little bits like that. Okay, you're a concept artist. I just saved you so much time. Okay, but there are so many ways you could do this. You don't have to just use these random shapes, but um, they do add a nice, a nice sort of look. Uh, you could also, of course, um, use a spatter brush that actually has a leaf shape, right? That might be nice. And if you want to do that, you can use the concept brushes. Um, but I did, I do, I'm actually working on, pardon me, a brush for um, the upcoming brush set, which I don't know if it's in here. Let's see, do I have it in here? I do not. Um, but I know that I have it in my other version of Photoshop. So why don't we just open that up? because I want you to see this really quickly. I'm gonna give you all a sneak preview of something. This is gonna be pretty cool. And then we have just enough time for our seventh and final tip. And uh, you're gonna enjoy that. All right, let me show you this neat little uh, brush we got going on here. So let me just grab a brush and draw a quick... Um, let's just pretend we have a tree that looks good. Okay, we'll just pretend this looks good. We, we all have good imaginations, so we can just pretend this is a decent looking tree. And uh, check this out, gang. In the spring 2021, we have the Leafala brush. The Leafala brush. This will be out probably sometime in, I'm going to say early May or thereabouts, but oh boy. Cannot get enough of this one. Instant leaves. Beautiful. Instant leaves for your tree. That is coming soon. Okie dokie. So. We are back here and we are going to now show you the seventh tip of the day. One of my favorites. In fact, not just one of my favorites, but it is today's pro tip. Today's pro tip, gang. So, are you ready for today's pro tip? Well, here it is. I'm gonna just uh, do a nice little drawing for you to kick things off. So I'll grab a little brush from the summer brushes. I like this crusty inker. He's my pal. And here we go. I'm just gonna draw a face right here. It's gonna be a face. It's gonna be a nice person. And there they are, and they're a happy person. Okay. Now I get this question a lot on uh, the old Twitter. Question is, Kyle, what brushes can I use to draw black hair? Right, so the texture of um, some black people's hair, right, you might find is not so easy to draw. Or you're looking for a shortcut or whatever. 
guess who comes to the rescue in this instance? It is our old pal, Spatter. So what I do is I create a sort of a hairline. Okay, check this out. So I'll do a little hairline here, like so with my lasso tool, just following along, right? And let us go back to our spatter brushes, of which there are many. And we have so many choices here. Um, now to start with, I could just use spatter. All right, that might be a good one. So what I'll do is I'll go dense up here, okay? But then as I get closer to the hairline, I'll just go a little lighter like that, deselect, and then I come in and I can trim up using the clear mode. Okay, we could use Spatterbot, we could use this same brush, we could use that nice, um, the noise that we used with pressure control, remember that? Right, we could do, do that with clear. And then I can just come up and do this, see that? It's gonna take that edge and it's gonna make it less severe, right? And that's it, boom, you're done. Simple as could be. So that's one way of using spatter brushes uh, for black hair. Um, now, of course, you can draw with the, the spatter brushes in the same way to achieve effects. You can get a softer edge. You can get all kinds of qualities uh, texture-wise uh, to add to that. Um, so for example, let me just take this person and slide him down here. I've cloned a human. Is that, is that okay? Is science okay with that? I know they've made some good sci-fi movies about that. And what I'm going to do is just do this. I'm going to go around here and say bye-bye. Okay. And then I'm going to do this. I'm going to make another little hairline kind of a thing. And I'm just going to go out and about to give myself plenty of room out here with that selection. And then go and um, grab another, let's see what we have here. Asteroid belt would be kind of cool. Do, 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 do. But I do like that original, that spatter brush I was using a moment ago. And I'm going to change the uh, spacing account to two. There we go. And then what I can do is I can then use that edge to go softer if I want. And I can take the scattering down so I have more control and bring that dual brush scatter down as well. And that's gonna tighten it up. It's gonna give me more control along the edge there, but I still get an edge quality that has enough randomness to use, uh, to, sorry, to display some of that texture that I'm looking for. See that? So lots of ways to use spatter brushes in this way. Of course, you can get creative and come up with different uh, ways yourself to make these hair shapes and styles. And that's just tip of the iceberg, but I, I wanted to show this as today's pro tip because um, if you're looking to draw this kind of texture of hair and you're struggling trying to find a way to do it efficiently, um, try this. I think you will enjoy it, right? So there is one little pro tip for you to close things out for today. And uh, well, thank you everybody for hanging out with me and watching this. Now I want to check and see if we have any more last little questions from the gang here, let's see. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bum. Uh, thanks, I always thought it was supposed to make the brushes get softer when you drew things farther up on screen. 
Oh, this is something to do with the hardness of the brush. Okay, Tim's on that one. Thanks, Tim. Darina says, I love how smooth the selection is. I've just been using a lasso tool a lot, Darina, but you know, go ahead and paint your shape or draw your shape. You don't have to use a lasso tool to do it and then make a selection out of that layer uh, that you've drawn if you want to do it that way. I wish there was a setting to make the relative softness of a brush stay the same when the size changes. Like I could go from a 200 pixel to a 10 pixel of blur. Ah, interesting, Pauline. That's, that makes sense. Um, alrighty. Excellent. Uh, when you edit the brushes, does it change them forever? Uh, no, Kara, unless you choose to save a new brush preset from those settings. Uh, fuzzy sweaters. Yeah, you could do fuzzy sweaters. You could do all kinds of things. So much you can do. Anyway, I really uh, I'm glad you're all here to hang out. Please remember to watch this again in two weeks. It's every two weeks. Tell your friends, uh, spread the word, and let's talk about brushes some more. Next time when I'm back, we're going to talk about using big brushes and how that's useful for painting and drawing. And I look forward to you all uh, watching that with me and hanging out. So anyway, have a great rest of your day. Remember to uh, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and please be kind. I'll see you next time and ciao for now.